Hello, Captains. Welcome to the Hyperion Lounge. Greetings. I'm so excited to see you again. I finally get to wear this. The new costume isn't just for show. It actually has a deeper meaning. As for what it is, we'll build suspense and reveal it at the end. But do you know why our attires are in black and white? That's because our Bianca is the first Valkyrie to have black and white forms. Yep, the black form comes from the active Honkai reaction hidden in her paternal Kaslana family. The white form comes from the holiness of her maternal Shariak family. The combination of the two powers allows her to surpass active Honkai reaction, surpass the origin of Honkai, and become Shixel's strongest Valkyrie among the Equinoxes. Then let's watch the version 5.5 trailer to bask in her awesomeness. いとしい若子よ。その力はあなたの罪じゃない。あなた一人で背を責任でもない。パパは私に勝てないんでしょ。これからは私も一人前の頭だね。私一人で。やめろ。やめろ。私は誰にも負けません。<笑> 成功の中っての人間こそがあなたの本当の主です。英雄は死にません。その意志は代々受け継がれます。天元の道ここにて切り開け。星々の温度を感じましょう。This trailer has made me so emotional. Why? From the skills, I see more than her power. I see the microcosm of her life. From the spring of Gloria, the Count of Excelsius, to the transformation of Antra. They are the foundation of her ultimate form. It's what she endured yesterday that shaped her strongest form today. Put aside the sentiment, it's time to check out Palatinus Equinox's skills. As the first imaginary type physical DPS, she can freely alternate between knight and guardian forms. Neither is superior to the other. If you like, you can stick to one form. When the need arises, tap Alt to switch forms. The switch itself has skill effects too. It's like owning two battle suits. You're looking at the guardian form clad in black armor. In guardian form, shield counter is played offensively. You can defend in place or ram with the shield up. It's easy if you've used Bright Knight Excelsius before. Moreover, Bianca's exclusive weapon is a lance that can fire shells. Combine it with battle suit skills for stronger joint blasts. The SP gained from weapon skills and shield counters fuels a more destructive charged attack. When the black armor forms a steed, Bianca assumes the knight form. By pushing the joystick to different degrees, you can make her walk, trot, gallop, or sprint. There are four stages of riding, with gallop being the primary one, because the sprint and stomp special attacks are only available while galloping. This form mainly deals damage by sprinting. Tap evade while galloping to stomp, which pulls in enemies over a large area. To put it simply, keep going faster to begin galloping. Just don't get interrupted by enemies or your attacks. Apart from having two forms, Bianca's throws are divided into light throw, heavy throw, and throw counter. Don't underestimate his throws. Even large enemies can be taken down by throws. Lastly, Bianca's ultimate is simply epic. Because this time, her ultimate damage is guaranteed to crit. Say goodbye to white damage numbers. Moving forward, we have a new lance tailored to Bianca. Equip Palatinus Equinox with Midnight Eclipse to fire shells. There's also the new Stigma set Equinoxial Wonder, tailored to Bianca. When designing this set, 
Our art and IP teams use the art as a device to tell Bianca's past. On the top stigma, Bianca's holding the holy blade and playing Hamlet. On the middle stigma, she plays Macduff, who's dealing with Macbeth played by Otto in the background. On the bottom stigma, she's playing Bassanio and Rita's playing Portia. These are all Shakespeare's plays and stories that Bianca experienced. Feel free to discuss why we chose these three plays in the comments. And Bianca's finally gone beyond the long dark and shattered the fetters of fate to embrace her brilliant life on a beckoning horizon. This radiance has also lit up this episode's gift code. But why do you insist on calling Durantium Bianca today? Hey, you asked the right question. This is a really interesting topic. If you rearrange the letters in Bianca, you get Kiana B, and this B stands for blonde. Oh, I finally get it. So, this setting's been here the whole time? Yep. Bianca and Kiana are created as a juxtaposition. One's like dad, one's like mom. One's emotional, one's rational. One has curly hair, one has straight hair. One has a hoge, one doesn't. Correct. You're finishing my lines. The imagination of our writers has completely opened my eyes. Since we were talking about Bianca, we won't leave Rita who's been protecting her out. Thanks to the power of the Holy Blade, Rita's obtained her own astral harness, Spina Astra. This proves she's also a guardian of the bubble universe. Like Bianca, Rita has a unique heroic spirit, and the difference shows on their astral harnesses. Compared with a warrior like Dia Ancra, Spina Astra is more akin to a heteroi, composed and graceful. Their adventure in the bubble universe means a lot to Rita and Bianca. They're like faithful companions, pushing forward together and battering each other. Back to the battle suit itself. As a mech-type fire battle suit, apart from the scythe, it also enables Rita to simulate the Holy Blade. With full Astrum, you can awaken Astral Harness and simulate the Holy Blade to bump up damage output. The Astral Harness state enhances basic attack, allowing her to perform extra basic and charged attacks. Rita's Star's Converge is memorable in its own way. Next, we have the Weapon and Stigma set recommended for Spina Astra. This is Ragna, a great mentor to many Valkyries. Bianca has inherited many things from her, and so has Rita. And remember that it'll enter a limited time supply event. After a number of holes, you'll receive 40 focus supply cards in total. Furthermore, in the new version, the anchor is getting a new Tipao, Heavenward Dragon. From the demo, we can see the tone of visual effects turns red, and a dragon appears during some moves. It's flashy, and it's got oomph. Especially when she pulls a ball with her leg. I just love it. Better yet, when you attain the Heavenward Dragon, you simultaneously obtain the glasses on version, Red Dragon Rises. You get to decide if she wears glasses. Silverwing Nex is also getting a new Chi Pao, Heart of the Night. Unlike Heavenward Dragon that's traditional and grand, Heart of the Night has a cyberpunk touch and a dash of the urban flair of Hong Kong cinema. To match the tone of the outfit, her barrier and bullets turn violet, while her skirt and shawl emit light that dances like a spectrogram. If you look closely, you have found Homu on her waist and the visual effects of Barry expansion. She's all grown up, but shows her inner child now and then. Maybe it's the warmth in her heart that hasn't changed. Again, when you obtain Heart of the Night, you simultaneously obtain the Glasses On version, Neonized. In version 5.5, a post Honkai Odyssey's current saga will come to a climax. First of all, Mei and Carol of Squad 3 will return to the battlefront. Compared with APH01, Mei's moves really connect this time. With sufficient KE, you can spam combo attacks, which makes combat feel much smoother. In white heat mode, the basic attack core ups the combo attack usage so you can unleash the baddest slashes in APHO. And Carol has finally left the shop. Other than the classic charging, she's learned to use Kiss a Pillow by Hurley. Charge, aim, and hurl her fists at enemies to hurt them. We're also updating a cool feature added in version 5.4. Let me guess, is it mounting? Bingo! This update brings more mountable monsters, such as the Emperor and the Demon. In addition, a gigantic boss will appear in version 5.5. 
As for how gigantic it is, you have to play the game to find out. There's more. In this APHO2 update, there's a limited time co-op event, Squad Assemble, in the hellish try mode, Judgment Falls, which is basically boss rush. New activities mean new challenges. What highlights can teamwork create? Find out in a special stream this weekend by our streamers. Since version 5.5 is a significant version, we're launching a series of login events. They'll reward you with crystals, supply cards, and more. Meanwhile, the Spring Treasury events rewards the latest S-Rank Battlesuit Spina S-Rank, plus an S-Rank Battlesuit option for free. Actively engage in version events to obtain multiple Spring options. Options contain materials and battlesuit fragments. And in the first three rounds of FOCA Select, every first 10 drops is discounted 30%. I'm overwhelmed by the bonuses. By the way, does anyone remember the Arihado in the comments? Surprise! It's actually an event in version 5.5. In the new event secret project, Arihato Alpha, build a town to enhance the stats and abilities of Valkyries to defeat bosses. Play it and get Hexer Bunny's new two-power Arc City Blues. In this outfit, Rami retains her playfulness and acquires a more mature charm. The Spring Lobby is opening in version 5.5. You can release Sky Lanterns, solve riddles, and interpret lots there. Interact to obtain crystals and materials. Last but not least, the total spending event, pool drops and spent crystals to claim Spina Astra Rain Cup Stamps, Bright Knight Excelsius, and Hersha of Sanda. Spend about 37 crystals to claim the Anchor's new outfit, Heavenward Dragon. We'll let you in another big addition. Which is the third chapter of Elysian Realm's Flame Chasers Trials. The hub will be upgraded in the new chapter. The new 3D hub will not only have more functional areas, but will also present random events differently. You can't have new hub without new biomes. In the Elysian Realm, a space constructed from memories, the unique biomes are more or less associated with the Flame Chasers. What association does a new biome have? Take a wild guess. Needless to say, a biome has unique inhabitants. Let's welcome the imaginary band. This update includes more new biomes and enemies, so please follow our updates. In response to new enemies and dangers, the five remaining flame chasers will appear with their sickness. We can't show you all of them today, but can show you one of them in detail. The 13th of the flame chasers, Pardo Felis. Technically, she's not a new character. The name Phyllis appeared here and there in version 5.0 story, and the name Prado, who's known for finding things, appeared in an event. Many thought they were two individuals, but some noticed that they can form her name, Pardo Felis. It's revealed that she owns the Elysian shop, looks like a cat, was once part of the covert troop Cocoon, and has formed a gossip group with Ellie and Eden. As the last of the 13, her role in this story is worth looking forward to. Captains, the introduction doesn't end here. But I thought... That's right. I stole the profile of another new flame chaser for captains. Vilvi of Helix, the fifth of the flame chasers. We can tell she's an engineer from her lines and descriptions. She's assisted the moss and fields including machine, power engineering, and energy. She's a researcher like Mobius, only specializing in other fields. They still share some qualities. It's apparent that like Mobius, as a researcher, she feels somewhat off. She may appear friendly, but... Ahem. That's enough for now. For more details, we invite you to discover them with us in-game. This program is really ending this time. Our Valkyries have found starlight in the darkness that leads them through the mist and across the long night to radiant dawn. And this starlight is the power of countless captains combined, which pushes Valkyries forward and accompanies them toward the beckoning horizon to carve their own shining path. A beckoning horizon is the theme of this global anniversary. That's why we dressed up for the version stream. Do you remember the promise we made in version 5.2? We've prepared a lengthy global anniversary program for global captains. 
will not only reveal loads of bonuses there, Dawe, one of our founders, will join us in person to celebrate the anniversary. The anniversary feature will go off on February 20th, which is the day after tomorrow. We promise it will be unforgettable. See you next time. See you next time.